You know, while we wait on, while we wait on Francesca, why don't we have the, the students to introduce themselves? Go on and why don't you begin by introducing yourselves and tell us a, a little bit about yourself. I don't want to ask any questions that Francesca was going to ask, but why don't you go on and begin by introducing yourself? Michael, would you like to begin? You're the first one on my screen, so I'll, I'll ask you to begin. Absolutely. My name is Michael Whiteside, and it's, it's nice to meet everybody. I am currently in the distance PhD program. I am a second year. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying the program. Some of my clinical background, I'm a current licensed clinical social worker here in Indiana, and I am currently working at the Big Ten Indiana University here in Bloomington, providing uh, mental health and addiction services. Thank you, Michael. Virginia, you are you are next on my on my screen. So it goes. Uh, my name is Virginia Hogdeny. I am a second year master's student at the on-site, which we had to be pretty agile last year. So it was on-site online uh, with COVID. So, um, but I I work at a private practice downtown. Um, and yeah, as Michael said, you know it's 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 been fantastic to be a part of ICSW. So. Happy to, to speak to all of you. Thank you, Virginia. Cal? Hello, everyone. Um, like Virginia, I'm a second year master's student um, on site. And my current internship is at Lakeview Center for Psychotherapy. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to be on this panel and to hear everyone's experiences and share a little bit of my own. Thank you very much. I see our fearless leader, student leader has joined us. Uh, Francesca, I, I took uh, the liberty as president of asking uh, the panelists to begin introducing themselves. So Mola was next, then Renee, and then uh, you, and then you, you can take over. Okay, uh, hi, oh, sorry, go ahead. My name is Todaj Mola. Uh, I am a second year PhD student of site and I currently work as a school social worker slash therapist and I really do enjoy um, the program at ICSW. Learning a lot and I like it. Thank you, Mola. Good evening, Renee. You're up next. Good evening, everyone. My name is Renee Taylor. I am a second year student at the in the master's program. I am distant, but that you are also looking at my cohort, so we call it hybrid. Um, and I am currently interning at uh, JPA Juvenile Protection Agency, where I work um, in an elementary school. Wonderful. Okay, Francesca, you're up and I'm going to mute and turn off my video. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, Renee, I just wanna say I worked at JPA for a number of years. <laughs> so it's wonderful to see someone who is currently there. Um, so yeah, my name is Francesca. I am a second year PhD on-site student. Um, I currently work in private practice. I actually have a practice of my own um, where I meet with mostly adults, um, some teens, college students, and a few children. Um, it's been so, uh, a, a blessing to sort of launch on my own. Um, and it's been a blessing being at ICSW and kind of um, being able to put into practice what I'm learning, um, what I've learned these past couple of years being at ICSW. So it, it's, it's amazing. And it's an amazing um, being the moderator for tonight um, to be amongst my student peers. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Thank you so much, Dr. Stewart, for introducing us all. Um, and so I'm going to open this question um, pretty much to everyone. Uh, many of us have um, had our journeys. Um, I'm sure as we were researching um, which schools we wanted to attend for our um, higher, higher education, whether that's master's or PhD. Um, and so I'm gonna just kind of start in the way that I see you all on my screen. Um, Mola, kind of tell us a little bit about um, what prompted you or what led you to attend ICSW. Uh, thank you, Francesca. So 
fresh out of college and I was practicing uh, therapy and um, I, I was clueless most of the time. So I felt like I needed more education and I wanted to, to pursue my PhD. And when I was researching online, I saw ICSW's program and during my working experience, I found psychodynamic treatment to be effective too. Uh, especially when I was working with uh, my clients who were experiencing trauma and uh, anxiety. So I felt like that's an exact match for me. So it just uh, joined in, got accepted and started my education. And the second thing that encouraged me to pursue at ICSW is the easy process for me to uh, apply to the school and get accepted. In other schools, there are so many criteria that I was in process uh, still and it might take years uh, to complete or go through that process, but ICSW made it so easy for me to accomplish or pursue my dream, so. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. And yes, when you're thinking about um, a program, um, yeah, the the ease of being able to apply apply to it and it not being so difficult and overwhelming. Yeah, that that that's such a great experience. Um, yeah, that that led you here to ICSW. Um, how about you, Renee? What 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 led you to ICSW? So I actually graduated. Um, with my bachelor's degree in business because I had always planned to do something in social work, but I wanted to learn how to manage money first. Um, um, and so I had actually worked in a couple of different social work uh, fields for about 10 years. Um, and because I didn't have the degree, it sort of limited what I could do. It limited um, the, the involvement I had in the treatment process. And one of the things I kept running up against was when I'm in those rooms where we're talking about the client and their treatment, no one would ask why they're doing something. No one was concerned about the environment as to how it contributed to their behavior. It was more just about what we needed to do to fix it. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a family friend who was getting their PhD, the ICSW, who also has an extensive um, background in social work. Um, and they explained to me the difference between going to um, a, 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 a um, social work program as opposed to coming to ICSW. And I really appreciated the focus. And so that sort of led me on my journey. Yeah, and, and, I, and I can just imagine how, um, just how you're able to, I think, connect those dots in the way that you, that you were attempting and wanted to in, in settings or in sessions with your clients, right? So like there, there's something deeper here, right? That I wanna be able to tap into and to, you know, to pick a school like ICSW, um, I imagine, right? Those, that those dots have been connected for you. That, that's amazing. Um, Kyle, how about you? What, what led you to ICSW? Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so I have been interested in what makes a good life or how one lives a life full of meaning, uh, how one lives an intentional life. And I sought to answer these questions in various ways. Um, out of high school, I served in the Marine Corps and I wanted to help others and serve a higher purpose, um, give back to the community. Um, in undergraduate and graduate school, um, I studied philosophy and in that read about ethics and morality, theories of the mind, existential and phenomenological problems. And all of these felt partially on the right track, but I missed some of the practical impact of these theories and how to actually impact human lives. Um, I kind of wanted to find a place where the rubber hit the road. Um, while I was at my university, um, I began to see a school psychologist who identified as a psychodynamic practitioner. Um, and that had been the first time I had ever heard that term used and I didn't know what it meant. I feel like I still don't know what it means, but for different ways. Um, but I had seen many therapists before her and, and yet she feels like my first, mm -hmm. like it all began with her. Um, and so this wonderfully transformative period, I, I felt myself seen um, like a mother who watches her newborn or heard as like an orchestral conductor listening to the piece of music being played. And I felt held 
in ways that I didn't know I needed until she gave them to me. And so I wanted to give that back and pay that forwards and help others in the ways that she helped me. Kyle, that's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm like sitting in awe <laughs> as I listen to you share um, what, what brought, and I, and I hear so much um, Winnicott in that and just the, the holding it and, and just the, the, the mothering um, in, in those aspects. And, and, and you said it a little bit of like um, this idea of living a full life or, how, you know, how that, that just, that really, you know, that really, you know, hit home with me. And, and yeah, to, to know that, yeah, what is this cycle dynamic, right? Like, what what is this? And like you say, I think many of us are still um, figuring out what that means. Um, but what a what an amazing um, journey, you know, that got you here. And I and I and I know we're a day after, but um, happy Veterans Day to you. You know, we we thank you so much for your services um, and and all that you've done um, for us as as a country. So we we just want to celebrate you in this moment. Um, thank you so much, Kyle. Um, for you, Virginia, what what led you to ICSW? Yeah, you know it's it's funny um, hearing Renee talk about her studying business finance is very near and dear to my heart because I came from corporate finance. <laughs> so it's a bit of a, a very different route to get here. Um, but I had, I mean, much like Kyle, you know, I kind of, I feel like from, for a lot of us, actually, it starts with our own work. And so uh, my therapist, um, who, you know, a little bit of a mentor as well, uh, you know, he introduced me to ICSW and just kind of helped illuminate that this was a path and talked to me about his experience and introduced me to some faculty. And, and I, I will say that like, we have some fantastic faculty here. So it's really been such a privilege to learn from everyone. Um, and I mean, before starting, I had, I had quite a long evaluation period where I spent, I think, a few years kind of looking at, like, should I do it? Should I not? <laughs> um, and so, but I, I, at the time, you know, I was heavily influenced by Martin Bergman, who um, I used to refer to as my like, psychoanalytic sweetheart, which I'm sure you will all read into. Um, but I, I, I really appreciated, you know, his close attention to uh, the familial trauma and the generations after the Holocaust and the work that could be done there. And it really just spoke to some interests of mine. And, and like Kyle, you know, really seeing the individual and sitting with the individual and, and coming from a corporate background, looking for something very tangible, you know, something where you could really sit and understand a person. And so, and I think that's such a privilege of our work is we really do get to sit with people as they are. So um, yeah, it's, it's quite an interesting path here, but so happy to be here now. Yeah, right. G getting to sit with people where they are, like, I think that's such a profound statement. And you're right, you know, for both you and Renee have stated this, you know, moving from corporate America, you know, into, um, or just the financial parts of it, like, oh, this is so new and so different, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's literally black and white. Um, but yeah, but and, and I, I can just imagine, you know, again, for you, just what what that experience has been like making that transition and and I and feeling as though I've you've landed in that place um where you should be. So that that is amazing. Um thank you, Virginia. Um and Michael, yeah, what what has led you to ICSW? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for asking the question. And and again, I echo everybody's sentiments. Kyle, thank you again for your service. Definitely appreciate that. My father-in-law is million, but my dad's in the army. So I, I definitely appreciate all the, the sacrifice. In regards to what led me to ICSW, I actually come from a social work background, but primarily my training was in CBT. So very behavioral, very tangible, like, right, like just really focusing on how can we just change the thoughts, solve the problem, and we are good to go. And that is no shot at any, you know, behavioral practitioner. I love it still to this day. Um, but... For me, I wanted something more. I was working in a psych hospital, so working a lot with suicidal ideations, homicidal ideations, and just seeing, you know, young people coming back through that cycle of being hospitalized over and over, especially our, our people of color, who often yeah. went unseen, unheard, and just totally misunderstood. So I was like, man, I, I, as, a, as a clinician of color, I felt that responsibility. I, if, if I have the ability and the drive, I got to do it. So it was a no brainer. I always wanted to become a doc, uh, become a doctor and, and receive a doctorate just to inspire others that, hey, it's, it's possible. 
in Indiana, it, it's, it's a little less less urban where I am. So a lot of times having that image just meant so much, uh, even as an intern, right? Hearing like, oh, you're the first black therapist I've seen. And this kid is 17, been in therapy since five years old. So to be able to speak to him or, or her or them and identify, hey, what are the core issues? What is really driving uh, a lot of this, this pain? And be able to help them move towards healing. When, ICS, when ICSW said that in the mission statement, that was all in. Yeah. 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 To, to getting to the core, right? Like, I, I think we've all experienced that, you know, um, and, and Renee spoke a little bit about that too, of just, hey, what, what's really going on here, right? Like, how, how do we get to the core of that? And again, finding, um, finding a place such as ICSW that, that that's a part of their mission statement, that's a part of who and, you know, what they are. Um, it, is a, it, it becomes, yeah, now, now I, I have this in, you know, my practice, but now I'm learning more about it in, in, in an in-depth way. And to be able to apply that, you know, with your clients is, is, is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you guys so much um, for, for that. Our, our next question, um, and I'm going to start with our um, master level students with this question. When you think about how your professional experience um, and what that journey has been like, how, how would you say your what your expectations have been of ICSW, how does those match? How does that match your professional experience? Um, yeah, so how, how would you say what your expectations were about ICSW? How has that matched your professional experience? And any of our master um, students can, can start us off. I'll go, um, please. So um, when I think about my expectation and my professional experience, I think in the beginning, and my classmates can attest to this, I really had to, while well, I was really working on um, managing my social work brain, mm -hmm. um, when I was presented with a problem, let me fix it. Like, this is what needs to get, you know, and, and I was always fascinated with how um, my classmates were adapting and learning how to make interpretations and take the patience and the time to sort of sit with what they're being presented. Um, and that was what I needed. I, and, 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 and that's what I continue to appreciate. And, then, and, and I also am reassured that my social work brain is still valuable. There's still usefulness to it. Don't let it go. Um, and I'm re-encouraged by my, my professors and my classmates that you know your training is still valuable. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also being, being given space to learn how to take that time and to, and to sit in it. Yeah, yeah, the importance of taking that time and sit in it. I often find myself using that just to sit in it, right? Um, and we can, we can very much operate from, from that um, clinical brain all the time, but how do I take my time and sit in it? I think that is so, so very important. Um, yeah, Kyle, yeah, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I, I was just going to kind of contribute to that. I mean, I Absolutely. think that that's, that's one of the things that's been so, I, I came in with a kind of a very clear vision of what I wanted to do. Um, I knew I wanted to work at a private practice. I, I wanted to continue to work with um, individuals kind of like the colleagues that I had left. I kind of wanted to, to bring in a sense of like the, the mundane problems are, are still something to talk about. There's still something to consider and there's understanding to be had in that space as well. Um, and I think that that's been such a, a value add of, of our, and in particular our cohort, great. Uh, but having such different internships, you know, we really get into different experiences. And so as someone who came in kind of with, you know, good blinders, but let's call them blinders, that's what she wanted to do. You know, it's been incredibly valuable to talk to you know, Renee, who's got you know, wealth of experience with patients and to kind of bounce ideas off of everyone and see like, here, my supervisor, you know, we, we talked about it this way. And, so, and, you know, a little shout out to Woody as well. I've had the pleasure of seeing my consultant. So we get a lot of, a lot of saturation here for Woody. Um, but no, I, I think the experiences that ICSW and, 
and the space to discuss where this thought can be applied it has been so valuable because it, it works in you know an agency setting in a school in a private practice and just with people you know there's 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 something to really respect uh regardless of where you are and i think that that comes out so so easily with conversations at, at icfw yeah absolutely and and i again you, you guys are just saying so much like if i was in a session, I was like picking all this apart, right? But it, it is, it's that, you know, where where these thoughts come from and where to put them, right? Like how to really put them into their proper perspective. I think whether that's with our clients or whether that's with our peers, right? Um, knowing how to navigate that. Um, and again, as Renee said, just like, and sometimes sitting in it, right? That it doesn't have to be a rush, but just, hey, let's, let's really think about where does this come from and, and where do we need to kind of apply it and put it at that, that makes total sense, um, Virginia. And, and how, about, how about you, Kyle? Yeah, um, I often find that I, I come into new situations staring at my feet because I'm afraid of tripping over them. Um, and that has also conferred some unexpected benefits, um, namely that I, I don't carry many expectations with me and I find myself, allow myself to be immersed in an experience um, without preconceptions really forming and shaping what I hope or fear it may be. Um, I found that had been echoed and, and quite receptive um, to some theoretical sensibilities, um, namely like Thomas Ogden um, of Without Memory or Desire. Um, and so I find ICSW and, and both of my internships to have been like wonderfully generative and supportive um, and challenging um, in, in equal but shifting measures. Yeah, yeah. And, and Kaya, you bring up um, an interesting point. And this isn't a question, but I, I'm feeling led to ask this. It's just even with, with, with your internships, right? Like I wonder how, how has ICSW's experience that you've had thus far, how has that shaped? Um, the way in which you approach your internships, and this and this question could be both um, for for anyone, PhD or master. Just you know, maybe just a couple of people to answer. How how has that experience thus far shaped the way you approach your internships? I mean, I'll speak just briefly because um, I'd love to hear from everyone else. But I um, I was again, I was very specific. Uh, I worked at a I work in a private practice um, and I kind of found my supervisor through a mentor and we really got into, you know, who influences and how does she envision her practice? What is the purpose? Um, all of these things. And, and she's, she's in her psychoanalytic training now, almost finished. And so a very heavy um, psychoanalytic, psychodynamic lens. And so I found that to be really bolstered through ICSW because I've kind of been super saturated um, and able to use a lot of what we what we bring up in class and, and kind of it's it's really relatable and I've been very fortunate I, I chose my internship so that way I could continue it for both years so that way I really get to um, keep my patients and have a little bit of a longer experience yeah absolutely yeah and the 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 getting to um, the meaning right there, there's there's such a meaning in how we approach our work and and I think again just as you're saying Virginia to have to know where to put this stuff sometimes right like often we 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 come across so much information or right? so much experience and it's like and how do I put all of this in its proper context um yeah that that makes that makes perfect perfect sense um, um our next question is as we think about, um, and, and I'll start with the PhD students with this question. Um, when you think about your academic experience and how it has aligned with you as a professional, kind of a little similar to um, the internship, but I think just overall, right, as professional counselors, um, how would you say your academic experience thus far with ICSW has aligned with who you are or how you show up as a professional counselor? I think for me, um, I feel like I have a lot of tools. I, I know that I still have to learn a lot about psychodynamic trauma, but it so far provided me a lot of tools to use in my uh, professional setting. Um, now I, I am more human than just communicate with them on what to do or try to shape behavior around and all that. 
Now I am sitting down across them and say like, how are you? Tell me about you. Who are you? And that is helping them get closer to me and opening up and making our uh, professional work uh, very effective than before. Very human, uh, there's empathy involved. Um, so it's helping me become a, the therapist that I was uh, striving for before I start going to this school. Yeah, yeah. Mola, I love the way you say that, you know, like you, you bring this, um, this human part of you <laughs> to your, with your clients. And I think, I think we can get so caught up in the techniques and the strategies and, oh, we should do this. And the theory says that, or, you know, we can get so caught up in that, that I think it can take away just the human aspect of we're just two people sitting in the room, you know, having a conversation that sometimes that's really all our clients are looking for, right? That undivided attention and we can get caught up in that, but, you know, yeah. And I, I think others would totally agree that ICSW, like, I don't think I've ever learned so much in such little time <laughs> that I feel like I'm just walking around with these this bag of tools. So absolutely, but I, I just love the way you said that you, you bring this human aspect to the work that you do. And I, and I imagine how meaningful that is for your client. Um, what about you, Michael? How, how would you say that the two has aligned for you? It has been extremely, extremely validating and, and ultimately, especially like I said, working with uh, students of color, patients of color, coming from different cultures where expressing your emotions, right? Like I, I literally met with somebody today that said, hey, there's no, there's no productive manner or there's no productive meaning for expressing that emotions. So coming from, you know, a CBT background, you're typically like, oh, okay, well, let's try, right? Let's re reduce these negative thoughts. But we don't really, it's something like kind of overlook the cultural aspect that really is, is driving that or affecting that. So being able to sit with them and, and, and have an approach that validates, you know, the narrative approach or just being able to sit with that emotion and process it, right? Like being able to give them the tools and not only that, the experience of, hey, how can we sit together in the room and process such trying emotions or such, you know, rough experiences that otherwise, have, you know, go unnoticed or get missed in the classroom, especially at a, at a PWI where, man, you talk about just being totally missed by professors and sometimes even parents and being able to show them the parallels of, hey, let's talk about these self-object relationships and let's talk about, let's, let's, let's dive into the mess and find out just how strong you really are and how much of a survivor you are. Like, for me, I'm all for that. I always have been. So this just now gives me the vocab to, to, to say it in a more professional manner, right? So definitely shout out to Dr. Huey Hawkins too for some of our, our conversations about that. Amazing. You know, I, I, I love the way that you just said to have that professional vocabulary, right? Like sometimes that, that, that's all we need to feel confident in the job that we do because we're already doing like to toot our own horns. Like we're already doing such amazing work with our clients. And sometimes I think for us, it is just having that professional, you know, clinical lingo to go with it. Um, but yeah, to be able to say, let's, I love the way that you said to dive into it, right? Let's dive into these feelings. And, and I, and I, you know, for yes, having a, um, a, um, a, a male of color to work with so many of our clients. There, there's so few of you know you all in the profession, but to be able to have someone to sit with to sit with another and say, hey, we can do this together, right? We can dive into these feelings together. And you're so much stronger than you already know, right? Let let's just let's let's see that or let's experience that. It gives them um, that ability that even when they're not with you, that they can do this, right? You're, that, that's such an empowerment. Um, yeah, Renee, Kyle, Virginia, what, would any of you like to, to share your experience? Yeah, so professionally, I, you know, I had an idea. I was going to get this information and I was going to go back and help my people. And I think the thing that I have learned is the importance of paying attention to myself mm. while, while helping people. Um, and because I've had experience in social work environments, the thing that I have seen, and this has just been my personal experience, 
is that um, these amazing workers will sacrifice self for the job. Um, and if I'm paying attention to myself, I also have to create an environment where I can continue to pay attention to myself for the betterment of my clients. And so when I see my other classmates and, and they sort of share their views for the future, I've been able to readjust what my professional life looks like. I've been able to open myself up to the idea of a little bit more diverse experience, um, being more open to other environments, uh, not only for myself, but the exposure for, for different kinds of clients. Yeah, Renee, you, you, the way that you said how often we sacrifice ourselves, right? Like, like I won't even ask us to show our hands of how many of us that actually do that because we do, right? We are, we're so, um, we're so connected to the work that we do. We're so intentional. We're so involved with it. We're passionate about it. And so oftentimes we, we do sacrifice ourselves. So you're absolutely right. Like we're, um, looking to get this information and take it back and implement it with our clients, but oh, how much we need to implement it with ourselves, right? The importance, the importance of that. So yeah, thank you for just reminding us of how important it is to take care of us as we're seeking to take care of our clients. Um, Virginia and Kyle, did either of you want to share? We do this all day in class. We like to see who's going to unmute. So this has been one of the agile aspects of this past year going online. Um, no, I mean, I think that this, this is just such, I, I, I can't, you know, praise the dynamics of this type of program in the cohort that it, it produces because it is such a, it's such unique work and it's so such a unique graduate program to then talk about it and talk about yourself because there's always the self in this, right? Like with the counter transference, you know, what, where were you in this? And it's like, oh, come on, give me a break. Um, but it's, it's there and that's just, it's so meaningful. And so, um, no, I mean, there, there's so much to talk about with, with that. And I think with Renee's point about saying like, being able to envision something different. And even, you know, I've said this, I don't know how many times now, how I came in like, a med student saying, I'm going to do this only. And it's so much more broad than that. And there's so many different ways that we could take this work and where we, could, um, how we can bring different populations to different spaces and make things open. And so, no, I, I think that that's something that's such a benefit of just having the space to talk about it and learn together. Yeah, that there, there is something that's so rich about having a space to talk about it and learn together, right? I, I love that. Um, Kyle, anything? No, I don't think so. I think everyone said such beautiful words that I, I don't want to tarnish that with my own. <laughs> you, you got it. <laughs> um, and so as we think about post um, graduate school, right, and, and what our experiences, what we hope and look forward to our experiences being, um, once we, you know, wrap up our time at ICSW, um, what are you hoping, and, and this question is for, for everyone here, what are you hoping will be um, your takeaway from this experience that you feel like this, this will be lasting, right? Maybe not just professionally, but also personally. Um, what do each of you feel like will be your lasting experience um, once this journey is all said and done? I'll just real quick, I want to speak to what Michael said earlier about when you're working with populations and sort of introducing new experiences. I think the first semester, listening to, you know, the expected ways of development and the expected ways that, you know, children are supposed to bond with their parents and comparing it to um, the, the common way in the communities that I'm familiar with of how their bonds are built or, or how they develop. Um, and then sort of looking at who they become, being able to have the conversation of, um, it's not just that you're bad, or it's not just that something's wrong with you. Um, there's things that you deserve that you did not get. And it, and, and it's not okay, and it's okay to be mad about it for a bit. And it's okay to want these things. Um, and suffering is not always, you know, the, a badge of honor. And, and, I, and I, I, I look forward to giving that 
to every person that I experience, um, that, that I've learned that, you know, we are not just, you know, horrible people. Things happen and we react to these things. Some of them we can control, some of them we can't. It was the idea of being, you know, becoming aware of them before we decide to fix them. I had a conversation with a client about her behavior and I said, you know, I don't really know too much about you, but I can tell you whatever it is that you're doing, you learn to do it because it worked. Yeah. Like it worked. It may not work now, but it worked at some point. So let's work from that space as opposed to what's wrong with you. You know, Ren, it, there's, there's words, you know, I sort of a running joke, but it's so true that um, taking an epistemology class, um, kudos to Chris Cretrone, um, taking a, an epistemology class, I have learned to look at words very differently, right? Like we say these words, but I'm just like, well, I know what that means to me, but what does that mean to the other person, right? And so when I hear such words as, you know, children are bad or people are bad or they're, you know, manipulate, I'm like, well, what does that really mean in the context of that individual and even for that individual, right? Like so, so many of the things that our clients hear, they take ownership of it, right? They internalize it, they make it their own. And we're helping them to say, well, let's look at this a little closely, right? The way that you said, Renee, well, you've been doing this because it's, it's been working. We're, we're seeking to help you find other ways, but yeah, these things kind of make sense, right? For, for our clients. And so to, to be able to just help them to look, you know, look at things from a different lens or a different angle, um, how, how rich that is and how um, lasting that is for, for them to create that space. I think as Michael has said, let's, let's dive into this, right? We're creating that space. And so that's, um, yeah, thank, thank you so much, Renee, for, for bringing that, um, that point back, because I think that is so, so very important. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and again, as we talk about just, um, you know, again, as we're embarking on this journey, and as, you know, our journeys, um, you know, in the future come to an end, what are we, what are we hoping to take away that would be something lasting for us, both um, personally and professionally? For me, I'll definitely say being the change agent, like being equipped to truly implement change. But when I think about some of these struggles that I hear on a daily basis, I think about how it's not just been an individual, but a generational concern. It's, it's been something that has been passed down and, and replicated over and over and over again. And nobody's been able to understand or at least give it a voice. So for me, this program, just being able to truly understand the unconscious and how it works and these desired wishes and, and forbidden objects and being able to explore that and create a safe space, that would be something that will last with me forever, especially being able to give that type of power to a student who's either been shamed or muted or, or just outcasted or even thinking about these, these sort of things, right? I know in some communities, there's this idea of no, nah, man, we're going to keep business at mama's house, right? Like, you know, you're not going to come out here and tell your therapist or anybody else what's going on. So then how do I tell my therapist what's going on when mama told me I can't talk, right? So being able to see that from the lens of the unconscious and bring it where it's safe enough to talk about, where you don't feel like you're betraying mama, is huge for me. That is just huge for my own personal development, but also just the way that I understand the human experience overall. So thank you to the Institute for, for giving me that gift. Yeah. yeah. And, and what an amazing gift <laughs> to receive, right? What an amazing gift to receive. You know, as I, as I think about so much of what you, you've said, Michael, is, yeah, I, I, so many of our clients come in with these, um, these generational sayings. I'm not sure what to, how to really name that, but this is, this is how they've been raised and this is how they've done life, right? And, and now we're inviting them into this space that's for them to say, let's take all of that off, right? Let, let's, let's, let's let all that go. And they're looking at us like, I, I've always worn this. How, how, how do I take it off, right? How do I trust you enough to say that I, that I can take it off, right? Um, that, that's working it up itself, right? Um, but, but that lasting thought of, but we can create these environments, right? For ourselves, as Renee pointed out, like we don't want to forget about us, but then we also can create this um, for our clients. So yeah, so that, that's, 
absolutely that is that is lasting um yeah yeah what what are what are others thinking about what what they um what their takeaways will be from this experience so um, when I start to study social work, my focus was on the healing process of it all. And then I found therapy to be a lot more effective or easier for me to. And then when I joined ICSW, I have learned a lot of ways on how to help people heal. I mean, it's sometimes frustrating to know that we can just people help function on a daily basis and treatment session can last for 10 years, which I think is too long. But still, as long as uh, I feel like I'm helping somebody live a quality of life every day, and um, that would be the most important thing in my life. And that would be what I would do after I graduate, use all these tools and apply it to people, see, see people smiling. Like sometimes I work in a level six um, uh, special school uh, for children uh, who cannot, who, who are sent to this school because uh, regular schools cannot accommodate their behaviors. Um, and sometimes when you see them smiling and laughing, and that is like the most beautiful moment ever. So I feel like I want to keep on doing that so that I can see people more being happy, yeah. laughing and smiling. I don't know how realistic it can be, but there will be moments like that. So. I'm targeting that way and I'm getting all the tools I need so far. Yeah, the, to see a smile, right? We, we, we know that, um, that that just brightens someone's day, right? To be able to um, use the tools that we've learned just to, just to see someone smile, right? Like there, again, there, there's so much in that because you're right, Mola, it isn't about you know, us trying to fix someone or cure someone, like we're, we are, and we're a different kind of object for them, right? And to just, uh, just to be able to sit with them and just to find that place to smile again, how meaningful that is. That I always think about the impact that, yeah, we're making in the therapy room and that that's our sort of playroom and our practice room. But when our clients leave us, right, are they still able to smile when they're not in our presence? Are they able, you know, to still cope and live and be? So, um, yeah, we're, we're doing some amazing work there so that even when, they're, when they leave us, they can continue to smile. Um, I love that. Um, yeah, for others. Yeah, I just say, you know, I am one thing that I kind of uh, came to well over the last year and a half is an interest in couples work. Um, and I've been very fortunate at my internship to be able to incorporate some couples work, which has been incredibly rewarding. But for me, um, coming in with a focus on uh, bringing in a, a cultural lens to the work, um, and, and for me, it's specifically coming from a Jewish background and, and thinking of the, the way that that shapes a family um, and a and a group of individuals and and um and there's so much there <laughs> and so through couples work thinking about how different cultural backgrounds come into a home a setting and how do we talk to those you know how do we talk to the differences in communication and the ways that we were taught to deal with our emotions and our problems and so uh, that's something that really I, and I am thrilled ICSW is, is getting, um, I think there's a new program out for, for couples work. So I, I love to see the school moving in that direction because it's, it's good for me. Uh, but I think that that's something that I, I definitely have, have gotten from ICSW and, and will continue after is, is a focus on the multicultural lens uh, and specifically looking at couples. But basically, how does that, how does that come to your day to day? Because it's there. Uh, whether you know it or not, you know, all of those things that you grew up in, um, I mean, that's such a basis for, for this type of lens is that, you know, you're, you're operating off of early, early memories and, and things that were instilled with you. So I think always bringing that to the surface and making that part of the conversation has been so helpful for me. Yeah, you, you know, Virginia, though, I, kudos to you for couples work, because I think for me that is like the hardest thing to do. Um, but it is that 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 the important part of like 
yet we are two different people bringing in two different cultures, two different ways of approaching life. How do we integrate all of this together, right? That, that is such a difficult thing to do. But just again, that space to, and we can bring it out here and we can lay it all on the table. We can talk about it. We can figure out how, how it works for everyone. But yeah, just leaning into um, how hard that can be, but how when we create that space, that, that's something I often say, we create that space, um, we can do such meaningful work with our, with our couples. Um, and yeah, right, and, and to know that, you know, ICSW will have a program, we can dive deeper in, into that. Um, I, I think, yeah, you're, you're, you, you, bring, you make such an interesting point on the importance of that and how that will last for you throughout your um, professional career and as you continue, yeah, as you continue down um, this journey. So absolutely. Um, yeah, Kyle and Renee, what are, what are you guys thinking? I was thinking how, um, I think the most important thing that I would wanna maintain post-graduation is the connection with my cohort. Mm -hmm. um, I find that through this last year and some change, um, they've in a lot of ways become my closest confidants and companions and, and dare I even say friends. Um, and I think <laughs> I want to maintain these relationships and see the ways that we all develop and we all grow into ourselves post-graduation, um, specifically how we all differentiate and yet how we also say the same. And so I, I really find myself deeply um, in gratitude to ICSW for bringing us together um, and, and hopefully, you know, lasting long afterwards as well. I, I think many of us can agree. We've made families in our cohorts. <laughs> I, the, the cohort that I am blessed to be in, um, we're all women, which I think is, is, is so amazing. Um, but I, I think one thing I love about our cohort is that we don't make a decision without talking to the other person, right? We, we say, hey, if we're not gonna have class on a Friday, let's talk about that, right? None of us make a decision um, without the other person. And we're mindful to just, hey, we, we, we have a, um, a group meet. So we're, we're just checking in and we're laughing and we're joking and we're sharing the good times and the bad times. Um, and, and we just lean into that. We are a little family. And so you're right, Kai, I think it's so important that uh, we continue to make, keep those connections. And we're not just a cohort, but we're also, we're friends, right? We, we're our family and hopefully those relationships will, will, will last um, as well. Um, Renee, what, what would you say? Well, thanks, Kyle, because I was going to say that, but it doesn't sound as good as the way you said it. Um, so that being said, I also want to continue the curiosity. One of the things I really appreciate with the professors is I'll bring a case or I'll bring a situation and all of them will always say um, it could be anything, but I'll take a stab at it or I'm not exactly sure or there's never a flat out answer. Um, an assumption. And um, again, coming from the world of social work, I'm used to a person getting three lines and them going, well, this is what it is. Um, and I just appreciate the curiosity and, and them being professors and being in the field for as long as they've been. And there's, they still have that. And I'd like to, that's something I'd like to carry with me. Yeah, right, Renee, I could not agree with you more. As I, as I think about what you're saying, and as I think about for myself, what I want to take away from this, um, I love when my professors say, you don't have to know this, <laughs> right? You don't, we're not expected for you to, this is new information, right? But continue to lean into the, what you don't know, be curious, ask questions, wonder, research, dig deeper, right? I, I love that because it, it gives me the permission to like, um, take myself off the hook that I'm supposed to like come in class and have all the answers and ask all the questions. It's like, it's okay that you, it's okay that after you read that 50 page paper, you still don't know what it's saying. Like that, <laughs> that is totally okay. You know, but, but bring that curiosity, bring those questions, bring those wonderings, right? I love my professors who I ask questions and they're like, no, Francesca, that's not it, but here it, here's what it is, right? They don't make me feel like you should know this. They, they're actually helping me to say, no, it's, that's not it, but he, here is what it is. And then I'm able to say, oh, okay, now I can see that. So absolutely, you know, this, this journey of being curious, I think 
it will be lasting for all of us, um, but that we can continue to play, you know, with, with these things that we're learning. Um, yeah, for as, for as long as we are in this profession, I think just in, in our personal lives as well. Um, and for our wrap up question, um, and this is again for, for everyone here on the panel, um, for our future students who are out there in the audience, right? Those who are on the fence about whether or not they should um, come here to ICSW, what is your advice? What is, what is a recommendation you would give to those who might, again, they're, they're looking at ICSW, they're not sure, what, what, would you, what would you say to them to kind of um, help them to make that final decision um, regarding whether or not ICSW is the place for them? What, what, what would you, what would you recommend? What would be your word of advice? I'd say go ahead and pursue your education. <laughs> I've been giving information about ICSW. Uh, I have I have some colleagues who would like to pursue their education, and like there is a great college that teaches about uh, how to be a professional social worker or uh, therapist. And I've been providing um, support, uh, inspiring them, and as well as providing all the information I could get. Yeah, just do it. <laughs> I love that, Mola. Just go for it. Absolutely. <laughs> How about others? Yeah, you know, and I also want to give a shout out in my notes. I also put the, the cohort as like one of the best bits and takeaways. So um, shout out to Masters Year Two. Uh, I would say sitting in on a class. That's something that I did <laughs> when I was evaluating ICSW. Um, in over the years, I did. I think I sat in on two classes. Um, but I think that that really gives you insight to what. I mean, the cohorts again just can't be said enough. But you get so close. We, we've in just the the material that the. the the nature of this program, I and mean, you're going to end up getting to know these people really well. Um, but yeah, sitting in on a class, seeing how the how the cohorts interact with each other, you know, this kind of material that's even brought up in class, um, and you get such a little snippet. Uh, but I would say, if you're already interested, you know, reach out, and we're always happy to have people sit in. You know, it's something that I think would really give a good insight to what it what it would look like. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I think going back to the initial question of what brought, you know, what brought me to ICSW, um, a good friend of mine, um, we actually had the opportunity to sit in, I, be, I believe it was um, Dr. Lynn McIntyre's, we sat in on one of her classes over the summer um, before I started, and I just was like, oh, I, I, I love this atmosphere. I, I found myself like talking as though I was in the classroom, right? I didn't know if that was okay or not, but I just felt so comfortable and at ease in the setting. So I, I agree with you, Virginia, like, you know, um, you know, if, if you're able to, right, you know, come out and, and be a part of a cohort, whether that could be in person or online and just feel for yourself, right? Is, is this the place for me? I, I, I would say, that, that helped, right, having that experience amongst some other things I was looking at, but absolutely to see what, what does this setting feel like? And I think um, because the, the cohorts are so small, again, it just, it's so, so family oriented. I think that was just so important for me. Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree. Just being able to have the, a snippet of the experience um, to help you make that decision. Um, yeah, how about for others? What, what would you recommend those who are, um, deciding to pursue ICSW? Well, I would say um, for me, the concern was always, you know, can I handle it? Can I, is it something that I can do? And to what Michael had, had said earlier, you'd be surprised how much you can do. Um, and so if you're concerned about your ability, um, you know, test it out. You'll be surprised at, at how much you know, you'll be surprised at, you know, what you can handle and you'll be surprised at what you produce. Yeah, I, I think none of us was in for the work that goes into <laughs> being a student in ICSW, right? We did not know what we were getting into. But now that we're here, I think it's safe to say I don't think any of us would turn back, right? We, we've learned so much. We've grown. You know, I my running joke is I think my brain has expanded just a little bit, right? Like I, I feel that way because I have such a wealth of knowledge and 
um, in just a, you know, a few, uh, a couple of years. So absolutely, you would be amazed at what you can do and how you learn to best manage your time in these programs. Like you, you learn some stuff about yourself. So I, I totally agree with you, Renee. Just as Mola said, do it, and you'll be surprised at what you can do. Right, um, Michael or Kyle, what what would your recommendations be? I would just say, if you're interested in being in an intimate setting where you can grow not just for yourself, but also in relating to the, the human experience and the experience of your clients, patients, whatever setting you're in, and to have that universal understanding, do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with, with, with Mola. We're in the same cohort. Do it. Just, just, just do it, man. You won't regret it. Yeah. You, agree. You, will, you will not regret it. Yeah. Um, and Kyle, to, to wrap us up. I hardly know if I can wrap us up, but I'll, I'll say what I, I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I, I find one of the most insightful and useful aspects of ICSW being such a small institute um, is the ways that these ideas and concepts, um, which are easy to intellectualize and, and abstract, um, through the text that we read, but that they come alive within the relationships and in these intimate settings. And so um, having an ear for that and an honest appreciation for the ways that they're embodied and they exist within the classrooms, the hallways, um, the, the, the sidebar conversations that we have, um, that to me really feels special in, in making, it, making it real um, and having that emotional resonance that allows it to say, stay a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, I, I I totally agree that the connection, like I, I feel that that's like the one word I've gotten from what you said, Kyle, the connection. And I think the connection on so many levels, right? Within our cohorts, within with with our professors, with you know the material that we're learning, and and how we take all of that and we make a connection with our clients, right? Like you said, even to the sidebar, to the emotions that that come up for us, right? Um, our classroom is our practice, right? In the same way that our therapy rooms are practice for us and our clients. And so to be able to take all of that and connect it and bring it together, um, I think it's, it, it, it is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, that is our time with the questions that we have. I don't know if we have any questions um, in the chat. Um, Sabina, I, I don't know if, we, if we're going there or not. No questions in the chat, but a lot of acknowledgement for the panelists, for the students. I quote, ICSW students are the best. <laughs> and the students rock. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, I, if there aren't any other questions, um, I just want to give a shout out to each and every one of you. Um, Students, Michael, Virginia, Kyle, Mola, Renee, it has been an absolute pleasure um, sitting amongst you all and just hearing from you about your experience. Um, I am gonna turn it back over to Dr. Stewart um, for the next step. Thank you guys so very much. And it's, it's been a blessing and honor and privilege to be the student moderator for tonight. So thank you guys. Wow, well, thank you. I think the student panel prove what we already knew is that our students are simply the best. That was amazing. Um, I loved all the comments, the bag of tools that you have celebrating our amazing faculty. And Mola, you may have given us a, a new tagline or something that there's this great college that's teaching the world. Uh, I love that. Thank you. Thank you to all the panelists. And really a, a special thanks to Francesca, Mola, and Cal for serving on the planning committee. We've had weekly meetings and they have been amazing. Their contributions have been so significant. So at this time, I would just like to thank everyone for attending today's events. It's been a long day, a long afternoon, but a wonderful afternoon and evening. This is actually called a kickoff event. It's called a kickoff event for a reason, because we are planning to have additional events throughout the remainder of the academic year. 
we are going to begin in January with a monthly lecture series. January 2022, it's not that far off. So look forward to receiving additional information about our monthly lecture series. I'd like to give uh, any of the committee members an opportunity to say anything before I close with our memorial slide. So committee members, any of our committee members? Okay, going once, twice. I think they probably feel like they've said enough. They were on all the panels. <laughs> Well, thank you to, thank you to the committee members uh, for all of your work in helping this to be a great event. Beautiful. Love you, Frank. Love you. Special thanks to Rob Martirosin for helping to compose the memorial slide. Thank you everyone for attending. Again, I hope that you have a wonderful evening and that you continue to participate in our 40th anniversary events. Thank you.